Many women have been told that incontinence is normal after giving birth or with aging. If that's you, I am here to tell you today that that is false. Incontinence is not normal after giving birth or with aging. Incontinence is a sign of pelvic floor dysfunction, and it is not adequately being addressed right now in the medical community. In this video, we are going to discuss the top tips that I recommend for every woman who is suffering with incontinence symptoms. And I need you to stay tuned till the end because tip number four involves the thing that I really need you to stop doing right now. All right. Tip number one, if you are suffering with incontinence, I need you to decrease your caffeine intake and avoid alcohol. Now, I know it can be difficult to decrease your caffeine intake, and I definitely love my coffee in the morning. I'm in the Pacific Northwest. We are coffee people, and giving up my coffee is just not going to be possible for me. However, I don't necessarily need to have four cups of coffee in the morning, especially if my incontinence symptoms are really flared up. I can definitely have one, one big one. One big cup of coffee is okay. But we need to limit the amount of caffeine, especially that we have in the later evening. So a lot of people will have more incontinence symptoms at night. They have difficulty holding their bladder while they're sleeping at night. So if that's you, drinking caffeine in the morning may be fine, but you need to avoid it starting at lunchtime and later on. This will decrease those urge symptoms that you have at night. Now, I don't know if you notice a direct correlation between drinking alcohol and incontinence, but I can guarantee you that the research is clear. If you drink alcohol, it can increase your incontinence symptoms. So while you're getting this issue under control, avoiding alcohol will help to decrease your symptoms. Number two, I need you to drink enough water. And this one seems counterintuitive. Many people want to give up drinking water because they're afraid they won't be able to make it to the bathroom in time or that they'll have an accident while they're out or something like that. And so they dehydrate themselves. Well, that does not help when you're suffering with incontinence. I need you to make sure that you're drinking enough water and staying hydrated because we need to teach that bladder and that pelvic floor how to work correctly. Avoiding any water just means that you're going to start sucking in that water from all of your food and it leads to a poor gut biome. We don't want to be causing other problems along with this. So I need you to be drinking enough water. Now, how much water is enough? I need you to drink enough water that your pee is clear and then keep drinking enough water so that your pee stays clear. It becomes a very easy way to measure because you can check it every time you go to the bathroom. Number three, if you're suffering with urinary incontinence, I need you to observe if you have any food triggers. Some people do have food allergies and one of the symptoms can actually be increased incontinence. One of the foods that's particularly known for this is citrus. So for some people, when they eat citrus fruits, it actually causes a urinary incontinence. Now, if you eat citrus fruits every day, you may not notice this because you just have it every day and you have the incontinence every day. But if you notice that your incontinence is worse on certain days as opposed to others, that may be an indication that you have a food trigger that's making your incontinence worse. All right, friends, tip number four, and this is the thing that I need you to stop doing. I need you to stop doing Kegel exercises. They do not work, and chances are good that they're actually making your incontinence worse. You see, the problem with Kegel exercises is that they are there to strengthen the pelvic floor. Of course, that's if you can do them right, and how do you actually know if you're doing them right? is really, really difficult. So I need you to stop doing Kegel exercises because chances are good that your pelvic floor is actually too tight and that's what's causing your urinary incontinence. You see, when the pelvic floor is too tight and then you ask it to contract and hold that urine while you make it to the bathroom, it's like, I can't, I'm giving it all I got, Captain. I can't give you any more because I'm at max capacity already. So you do a Kegel exercise and now you're trying to strengthen it even more, which makes it even shorter. The problem is what we need to do is get those muscles to a normal tone. It's most common in pelvic floor dysfunction that I see in my practice that patients have a tight 
pelvic floor as opposed to a weak pelvic floor. So what I'm going to recommend is that instead of Kegel exercises, you do this exercise that I outline here. It's going to help to contract and relax your pelvic floor, getting a more normal tone through your pelvic floor, which will help to increase your continence.